Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walchef, founder of Cali BBQ and Cali BBQ Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy we learn through lessons and stories. Today is one of the most important days of this show, and we've had some really incredible days on the show. But today we are recording at Unevolved Studios in North County, San Diego, with serial entrepreneur Jeff Fenster. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's truly a pleasure. I think you're having me. <laughs> Let's be honest here. You're hosting me, and the reason that we started this show is that we had a big idea. We turned our barbecue restaurant into a media company. We believe that restaurants need to think differently in 2023 and beyond. We've partnered with Entrepreneur. Toast believes in this show. They are the title sponsor of the show. They power the technology in our restaurants. But now here we are, and you've literally built what I tell people – Fans of this show understand that restaurants need to have their own content studio. You own not just one restaurant. You own a restaurant empire. <laughs> you own multiple businesses that all funnel back to now what you have is a content studio. Let's get to my favorite question to start off the show, which is where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage, or venue? My favorite stadium is Petco Park. Petco Park. Petco Park in sunny San Diego. I'm a diehard Padres fan, and I think what San Diego Padres were pioneers in doing was bringing the San Diego culture and lifestyle to the experience at the stadium. So they really were one of the first stadiums to take local restaurants, local concepts, and bring San Diego into the venue. And so as a fan of, the, of not only – what they understood is people go to Padre games or sporting events or, enter, or concerts for a host of reasons outside of the entertainment that's on the field or on the stage. And so as an example – my wife doesn't love baseball, but she goes for the fun experience. The olden days when you had the no brand hot dogs, peanuts, Cracker Jacks, etc., there was really nothing else for her but baseball, so I couldn't get her to go as often. Now it's an eating experience at Petco Park. It's a drinking experience with all the local breweries that they bring in. They have other fun activities for children from a, a little diamond baseball stadium for wiffle ball in, in the outfield, and they've created an experience for the family. So when you have a concert there or you have a sporting event there, Yes, I'm a diehard baseball fan. I come for baseball, but the whole family can come and find something to really enjoy, and it's, all, it's a good, wholesome night out. And so I think they were early on in doing that, early pioneers, and as a result of that, now you're seeing that spread across more stadiums and more venues. So that's my favorite one. So we're going to go to Petco Park. We're going to talk to Entrepreneur. We're going to talk to Toast. We're going to talk to the folks at Everbowl. I'm sitting right there with them. Uh, and I'm going to put you on the pitcher's mound. But we're going to have a conference. The problem with hospitality conferences is the content usually sucks. Okay. It's usually a sales show. And what we're going to do is something different. We're going to invite all the people that listen to the show, the people that we like to say are playing the game within the game, the people that are constantly evolving, constantly leveling up, the mambas out there in hospitality. And I'm going to put you on pitcher's mound. But I'm not going to ask you about Everbowl. I'm going to ask you, Jeff Fenster, why are you building a media company? I'm building a media company because you don't know what you don't know. And it took me a while to understand this. And what I mean by that is, is you can have the greatest brand, product, message, concept, story, um, anything. If no one knows about it, no one knows about it. So my goal with building a content a media company and a content arm of our business was to amplify all of our messaging and create the opportunity for us to accelerate all of our brands and everything we stand for and have that in-house. And in 2023, where everybody is the media now, we all have phones, the internet is drowned out with content that is being created without a thought, or without a process. Brands individually, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, or you're a manager of a department, if you don't realize that the way you amplify your brand is through that content and through that medium and how people consume that data, um, no longer can we just buy clients through traditional old school media where I buy an ad in the newspaper and that's the only medium from which people had before the internet. You know, TV commercials was the only way you would learn about new products and services. Today, you need to be on the forefront. You need to be pioneering. And so for us, we really thought through about the branding side of not just the company itself, Everbowl or Unevolved Products or WeBuild or now Unevolved Studios, but also my personal brand. Because as a, a, a leader of my organization, no one wants to hear a commercial about Everbowl. <laughs> They just don't. Like, I can, they'll, they'll do it sometimes. Yeah. But if I just promote Everbowl, 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 you change the station. Like, what do we all do during TV when there's a commercial? You go to the bathroom, you make a sandwich, you change the channel, um, you down, you wait for things to get on to record it so you can fast forward or Netflix, et cetera. So the days of commercials have changed. And so the best way to amplify your message is by building that personal brand also 
where if you're providing value, and I use this to provide value in my expertise and what I've learned from mentors, advisors, and experience, and I can share that to the masses, as long as I lead with value, I've earned the right to seed in some things about Everable and seed in some things about my products, my services, and what I offer. And hopefully the community says, hey, you know what? This individual has provided me so much value. I like listening to what they say. And as a result, I've learned about Everbull. And now I can be a franchisee. I can go buy Everbull in local stores. And now I know it exists. And I've earned the right to advertise my brand, my concepts, et cetera. So um, it's a long-winded answer to a very specific question. But I built it for a host of reasons. But the main two was because you have to take control of your own branding and your own amplification. And two, to build the personal brand alongside the business. So the first time that you and I had a conversation, we did a video podcast on my other show, Digital Hospitality, and that was in 2019. It was a very big event for us because it was the Farmers Insurance Open here in San Diego, and Cali BBQ Media got credentialed press passes. And I always joke and laugh about that because we're a Cali BBQ Media company, yet we're credentialed with 200 other professional media organizations throughout the world that are covering this golf tournament, yet you and I went to cover an influencers event. The show's restaurant influencers. We were there to cover an influencers event. But on that show, you had started building your Everbowl empire. That was 2019. Here we sit in 2023. The pandemic happened, but a lot of other things happened since 2019. Get the audience up to speed with, we've talked about the media, but give, give me the other three, three, three stools. Sure, so uh, back in 2019, all corporate, all owned by me, no franchise. We had at that time about 12 stores, predominantly in San Diego. We had one just outside of San Diego in Riverside County. The goal was to take over the world by corporate stores, never franchise, never open the business to anyone else. Um, as COVID happened, March 18th, 2020 was one of the worst days of my professional career. Had to temporarily lay off 400 people. Um, we shut down at that time 28 corporate locations. And for a day and a half, we didn't know if we were ever going to be in business again. Um, you know, one of the things I've learned when crisis happened, like in a fire, you stop, drop and roll. It was stop everything immediately because no one knew what was happening. Take a minute, drop and then roll into what's next. And so for us, it was OK. We built an, uh, a vertically integrated machine for ourselves, but it's built perfectly for franchise. And the reason a lot of franchise systems fail is because they're not built for franchise. Franchising is an opportunity for business owners to join an ecosystem and get the, the benefit of economies of scale, not just in buying food and having a brand, but the marketing arm and having a collection of entrepreneurs and business owners around the country, all vying for the same goal of building one brand. And when you buy into that, you're buying into all the SOPs and all the systems, et cetera. Well, with Everbull, because we built those for ourselves, not realizing we were ever going to franchise, we also have a construction fabrication company called WeBuild, where we actually build every Everbull and we do it very quickly, very efficiently, and very cost effectively for ourselves. That was what we started by uh, started started it for. Um, and the third arm is Unevolved Products, which is we source our own superfoods, we manufacture our own flavors, so we have our own di distinctive um, products in our store where you can't get them at our competitors. And we also were able to do it at a better cost basis for ourselves. So we did all that for ourselves. So when COVID happened and we took a minute and stepped back, we quickly realized we're built to franchise. Because if you join our ecosystem as a franchisee, you're getting the economies of scale on the build side through WeBuild. You're getting the economies of scale at the food prices and the products offering through Unevolved Products. And then you're getting all the traditional economies of scale that you get with a normal franchise system at the Everbull level. So... We said, hey, you know what? We have 500 franchise requests. We've never uttered the word franchise publicly, but people, just customers coming in have, have requested it. It's now March 22nd, 2020. Um, we know we're going to reopen. We just don't know when. We can't travel like we used to, and we can't grow as fast as we want to. So why not use this opportunity to open the franchise gates? And we did. And so we reopened all our stores on May 1st, 2020. We ended up selling the majority of them as, uh, to franchisees. Today, we have 60 open locations across the country in 17 states, 310 more stores sold that will be opening in the next three and a half years. 310 more? 310 on more on top. So we'll so be what's at that total 370, number? which 370. We'll, uh, we'll get to. And we're really excited on that front. And we get to partner with some really amazing both restaurateurs and you know business, uh, business leaders who dominate their, their respective parts of the country. And it's been awesome because it's, it's really – what I didn't know that I was going to get through franchising is the collective of Mindshare, the power of being able to not have to have our individualized team come up with everything. We have ideas pouring in from our franchisees around the country who are experiencing life differently, 
seeing what's out there differently, pushing the brand in areas and ways that is going to make Everbull stand the test of time and be ready to take on the challenges of 24, 25, 26, 27 as more competitors come to the space, as new products are, are being innovated. Um, so it's been amazing for Everbull. And then the WeBuild side has turned into something pretty exciting as well, as now we start working with third-party brands and concepts because what we built for Everbull is scalable. So WeBuild's business case is if you have an emerging concept and you're trying to scale, and it means you have a very similar look and feel like a franchise system or corporately owned, but it's the same thing again and again and again and again, WeBuild is great because we can become your single source for procurement, manufacturing, fabrication, installation, and construction. And we do it all under one turnkey roof where you don't have to go and find general contractors across the country. You don't have to find, you know, I buy my wood from this vendor. I buy my refrigerator from this vendor. You buy everything from us. We procure everything and we become the single source for procurement. And as a result, we're now working with Big Chicken and Shaquille O'Neal. We're working with Stretch Zone and we're working with a host of other concepts that are looking to really grow their brand in 24, 25, and 26. Big Chicken's one of the most impressive concepts that I've come across. And uh, I'm going to be interviewing Josh and hopefully Shaquille O'Neal one day. And now a quick break from restaurant influencers to share an exciting new offer from our sponsor, Atmosphere TV. Go to atmosphere.tv forward slash BBQ to not only get Atmosphere TV for free, but also our audience is given the gift of $200 in ad credits, as well as free activation. Join more than 40,000 other venues who use Atmosphere TV by signing up with the code BBQ at atmosphere.tv forward slash BBQ. Keep guests entertained with Atmosphere TV because you have the ability to turn your promotions and your advertisements onto your television with this platform. The simple plug and play device lets you take control of the content on your screens. Keep guests entertained, engaged, and informed of real-time specials, career opportunities, and announcements that you can personalize within your own custom content dashboard. Tap into great channels such as America's Funniest Home Videos, Fashion, Throttle, Chive TV, Sports Highlights, Red Bull, Real Madrid, along with unbiased news and entertainment. There is something for everyone. Over 60 curated channels of short form, entertaining content to choose from right at your fingertips. They also have an incredible ad supported network that allows you to not only market within your four walls, but also locally or nationally if you desire. The platform gives you full control to dial in your marketing efforts. Please go and visit atmosphere.tv slash BBQ and let them know restaurant influencers sent you. You took us on a tour of all of your businesses here, and we're going to put a link to the YouTube video, um, the behind the scenes tour, because you guys have to see it. It's incredible for me to have had the opportunity to interview someone like Rob Deerdeck, who's on Fantasy Factory, who's built all these incredible brands. But when I went to go to Rob Deerdeck's penthouse, I didn't actually get to go to what he had built. You literally took me on a tour <laughs> of what is happening here. Back in 2019, did you have this space? No. When did you open up this space? Uh, so we moved to the upstairs where we just took you a tour on. So we have the entire upstairs of this building. Uh, we moved here in here just a year ago. We were downstairs prior. Uh, we were downstairs for two years. So we moved into this building in 2020, right? 2019, 2020, just about when we were together. So before that, we were in another space, much smaller. Obviously, we continue to grow and expand and stretch our wings. So, so when you and I met in 2019, I think that, the title of the episode is How to Build a Personal Brand. <laughs> what took so long? <laughs> um, you know, we all have our uh, our things that we need to, we need to hear a hundred times till we finally <laughs> realize it was the smartest thing to do. So what's funny is, I'll, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to tell you. A because little, you were ready. I was. You were ready in uh, 2019. Well, I, I mean, you, it, it, to your credit, you've been doing a lot of other things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll tell you a funny story first in that same vein. So in 2018, we got an investment from Saruya Private Equity, a big private equity firm out of Toronto. And Aaron Saruya, they're the masters at franchise. I mean, they have some of the biggest franchise concepts that they're invested in, um, brands that everybody knows. They've sold handfuls of companies. And when they invested, he said, Jeff, you need a franchise. Before he invested, he said, Jeff, you need a franchise. And I said, Aaron, I'm never franchised. And he said, you need a franchise. You're built to franchise. This is a franchisable concept. And when he wrote us the check, I'll never forget, he looked me in the face and he said, Jeff, 
I'm going to invest in you because I believe one, I love your concept. You're vertically integrated. You're building a brand. You're much bigger than a restaurant. We want to be a part of this story. And one day you're going to be smart enough to realize that you're supposed to franchise and I want to be part of the system. So I was, I woke up, he was right. I was wrong. Um, <laughs> and I have no problem, you know, recognizing that yeah. I, I don't know everything and I, I learn new things every day. And the personal brand side was another one of those. I never wanted to build a personal brand because to me, personal brand was a way to achieve some sort of fame or notoriety or, yeah. or whatever. And I didn't want that. Um, I'm a private guy. It's just not something that was meaningful to me. I wanted to build my companies and I have investors and I want to return a nice return for them and build enterprise value on a daily basis. And my investors and my mentors and my friends kept telling me for the last three years, ever since 2019, <laughs> four years now, by building a personal brand, you're going to be able to amplify your companies even more. And by helping other people with the lessons that you already know and the experience that you have, um, you're going to inspire other people to do that. They're going to become part of your community. And as a result of that, they're going to be more exposed to your products, your services, your offerings, et cetera. So it took me a while. COVID happened. I was planning on doing it. COVID happened and I immediately pivoted to survival mode and then thrive mode. And then one thing led to another and years went by. And then January 1st, 2023, I leaned all in. Um, I made the decision into 22. I said, 2023 is the year I'm going to lean all in onto the personal brand side, uh, got with our team. And we made a collective decision here internally that this is what we're going to do in 23. We're going to finally eat eat the dog food that we should have been eating the whole time. Um, I'm going to do the best to help and inspire as many people as I can, share the lessons and experience that I've accumulated over the years and what has enabled us to be so successful, build the brand that we were trying to build, the Jeff Fenster brand and all the brands underneath it and with it and alongside it and see what happens. I mean, you're more of an expert in this space than I am. I'm, I'm at the forefront. I mean, we're, we're filming this in early part of 23. So hopefully by the end of 23, I see monumental growth in that. And I'm getting more comfortable with it. But there's a lot of elements to building the personal brand. I wrote a book two years ago. I'm finally going to publish it. Um, this is this is breaking news. Yes. Tell me about the book. What's it called? How do we buy it? It's called Relationship Bank Account. So yeah. I did a. I was hired by LinkedIn to do two courses, uh, one on building relationship capital and one on no marketing money, no problem. That's incredible. They're both available for free on LinkedIn Learning. So if you're a LinkedIn Premium member, you can access that through their library at LinkedIn Learning. And if you're not, send me a message and I can send you the link for free so you don't have to pay. Um, but LinkedIn's a great community for doing that. Most people don't know about LinkedIn learning. So let me, I'm not getting paid for this, but a little plug. We'll it's talk a to LinkedIn. phenomenal, <laughs> phenomenal learning system. Uh, think about YouTube, but it's curated content just around anything business or networking, um, thought leaders, business leaders, disruptors. It's awesome. Check it out. It's called LinkedIn learning. So anyway, I did two courses for them and one of them, that relationship capital uh, course and how to develop, build and leverage relationship capital turned into a book because a friend of mine is a he, he runs a publisher and said hey man this needs to be a book so we together we wrote this book um they've been yelling at me for about a year and a half to publish and i've been reluctant uh, just because it's scary to write your first book and publish as a non-author right those yeah. are your words and once it's out Have there you it's published out there. anything written online yes ever yeah articles? small little small articles? small little things but nothing nothing meaningful nothing serious um this is meaningful to me because the number one superpower I've used to grow my companies from graduating law school till now has been leveraging relationship capital. It is what it's not what you know, it's who you know. And how I've accomplished that is through developing, leveraging, and building relationship capital with people like yourself and you know all types of people that have helped me ele you know elevate everything I'm doing very quickly. You know, when I started a digital marketing agency, I partnered with Neil Patel. I didn't know Neil before I knew Neil, and everyone said I, I barely know how to use a computer. And all of a sudden, I'm partnering with one of the best digital marketers in yeah. the world. And that's because of relationship capital. When I started my payroll company right out of law school, and I was 24 years old and didn't even know how to run a business, you know, David Meltzer, I went in his office and I said, Dave, I started this company. I need to know business owners. Can you help? And he gave me 100 names. So I was able to walk out of his office with 100 warm introductions for real customers, clients. So my competitors are sitting there cold calling, smiling and dialing, going to networking meetings. And I made one, one afternoon, I made 100 warm leads probably turned into 30 or 40 deals. And overnight, I did what most companies might take a year to do. I did it in one meeting because I had the right relationships. So relationships open everything. And so that's such a meaningful part for me. So when the opportunity to write this book happened, I took it. It's been sitting on the shelf for, like I said, about a year and a half, but it's finally getting published now because we're ready to lean into the personal brand side. So the book's being published. So that coupled with um, a couple podcasts and um, internet shows that, that we're really focusing on with this What studio. are the names of the shows? Uh, one of them is the Jeff Fenster Show, which 
I'm excited. is uh, is going to be a fun show where we interview entrepreneurs, A-listers, celebrities, athletes, and just overall amazing people and reverse engineer two things. So the goal as an audience is two things from the show. One, what is the success formula? Because to me, success is formulaic. And what I mean by that is, is if you look at anyone successful, whether it's an athlete, an entertainer, a, a parent, a business owner, an employee, a manager, et cetera, successful people are successful because, and there's an answer to the why. Why are they successful? Because they follow a formula. And that formula is something they do, whether it it might be a little bit unique for everybody, but after you interview enough people and learn, you realize it fits into a bucket. And if you're sitting on, on the shelf right now wondering, how can I be more successful in life, in business, in relationships? There's a formula you can follow. And my goal through the show is to bring on these people and expose that formula to as many humans as possible so we can all be the best version of ourselves. And then because I think that that is a, a big goal and it in and of itself would be a great show, I also like to have tactical, what can I do today? Because one of my success formula principles and one of my core values is take immediate decisive action. And the other one is Kaizen to get 1% better every day. So I want to leave the audience with after that interview with something that they can do today to take immediate decisive action in that specific niche and how they can start getting 1% better. So it's not a master class per se, but it's the second part of the show is to really get and pull out some tactics, some tips, some things that uh, if I'm interested in whatever the expert's talking about, I can deploy immediately and start to take those immediate decisive action steps, start to Kaizen that part of my life and become what I want to be and be successful. And so I'm really excited about that show uh, just because I get to I get to learn as well. Mm -hmm. I get to be kind of the champion for the audience and say, hey, I want to learn about real estate. Let's bring on some of the best real estate titans in the world. Let's talk to them. Let's find out how to be successful in real estate and why they're successful. I want to I want to learn from Drew Brees and Drew Brees is going to come on the show. And we're going to learn about not only what made him a world, a Super Bowl champion and a world class athlete and a world class dad and human, but now he's dominating in business and he owns franchises and he owns 150 Everbulls. 150 Everbulls? He owns 150 Everbulls. Yeah, 150 Everbulls. Did he reach out to you? Um, he did. At, well, I met him through his agent years and years ago. Okay. Um, and then over the course of him buying our bulls during COVID at his house, because we, we launched a direct-to-consumer product, he eventually reached out and wanted to be part of the brand. And fast forward, he's now an investor and now one of our biggest franchisee. But he also is a franchisee of many other concepts, Stretch Zone, uh, Jimmy John's, Small Sliders, Walk-Ons, and a whole host of other um, companies that he's involved with. He's involved in two banks. I mean, when you talk to Drew Brees, you learn really quickly that this man would be successful no matter what he does in life. There's a reason for it, and we need to understand it because if you under knowledge is power, if you understand why someone is successful, you now have the opportunity to copy that. You have the opportunity to do those things yourself and develop those traits, those skills, and hopefully get some similar results in your own wake and, and whatever you're after. So I'm excited, really excited about that show. And then the second show is called Restaurant Secrets. Um, awesome. The goal of this show is different. You know, nine out of 10 restaurants fail. We all know the cliche. <laughs> yep. um, there's a whole host of reasons why that's true. And outside of entrepreneurship topics, which I get people reach out to me all the time and say, hey, can I pick your brain? Can I take you to coffee? <laughs> Don't say they pick can your I, brain. <laughs> I know. Can I hire you? Uh, will you do some coaching? Or do it's you a have great way to launch a media, media <laughs> angles. Instead of picking someone's brain, you can host them on a show. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Much um, better value add. I don't really have that full offering. So the idea behind this show is in the same thing. I get a lot of restaurant, a lot of chefs, a lot of restaurant tours, a lot of aspiring restaurant tours that hit me up because they've seen the growth and in, insurgence of Everbowl in such a short period of time. And they want to understand, hey, what can I do to be successful? Yep. So I want to bring on the top restaurant tours and I want to help explain nine out of 10 restaurants failing is a catastrophe. Yes. We need to fix that. I agree. And there's a way to fix that, and knowledge is the way to do it. And so um, I want to use this this studio and my platform and my relationship capital to help help a lot of people out there who are starting a restaurant and give them that access to information, somewhere where they can go and they can watch us on all the platforms and have video and have content, as well as promote the, the best restaurant tours in the country um, and give them a platform to talk about what they're doing and help grow. And so just being a steward of the of that of this industry. And paying it forward, leading with value, you know. So those are the things that make me feel good, and I'm excited to do those things. So all of those things collectively with the book is going to help us, you know, grow and continue to to build the personal brand and Everbowl, and we build alongside it. So let's talk to the people that are listening. We're very fortunate that the show reaches millions of people. We have incredible executives, incredible entrepreneurs, chefs that listen to this show, and they might not have a personal brand yet. And you said you're a man of action. And I've seen the act. I'm literally sitting in the action <laughs> because you decided to take it. But they're there listening to this show and hoping for that inspiration of what's the, what's the key? What's the switch 
where it goes, okay, now, January 1st, 2023, Fenster went to his team and said, this is now a priority. How do you talk to them and say to make it a priority for them? Well, I would say first, the anxiety or the apprehension you have, if it's anything like me, you might be worried that either you're not, it's not for you, you're not qualified, no one's going to listen. Well, the good news is if no one listens, don't worry about it, do it anyway, because no one listens. <laughs> good advice. Right? So that made me feel really good really early. I was like, you know what? If no one listens, no matter what I say, it doesn't matter. No one's listening. It's like singing in the shower. Yes. Um, besides that is recognizing what you want. If your true purpose is to have a brand that stands the test of time and you want to amplify the message to the masses, you can do it one of two ways. You can get lucky or you can build a personal brand. And I've never been lucky. I tend to create my own luck through you know, intention and, and putting intention where I need it to be um, and trying to use statistics in my favor. So if you have the way to get there lucky, I you know, more power to you. It just doesn't work very well and it's not something that scales. The personal brand scales and it opens so many doors. I mean, when you do those things, and it's only been a few months for me, um, I'm still very early in the in the process. Obviously, I've been speaking on stages for years, and I've been, you know, hundreds of podcasts as a guest, but I did it without a personal brand on the back end. It was just to promote Everbull. That's where I would drive you. How do people reach you? Oh, you can reach me on social media or go to everbull.com. And I would really try to funnel as many people as I could back to my companies, and I didn't aggregate that following. I didn't provide a resource or a place for them to come to me, and, and I missed out on that. I left millions of dollars on the table, both for my companies and myself. I missed uh, on tons of business opportunities that could have been created through partnerships and synergies and opportunities that could have been presented. Um, I probably missed out on stages where I could have spoken and impacted more people simply and solely because I didn't have a funnel. I didn't have a process for building that personal brand. And it wasn't on top of mind. So yes, I do take immediate decisive action, but I also either am 100% in or 100% out. And I was 100% out for too long. And I realize now the mistake. And so, you know, the old adage, the best time to do something was was 20 years ago and the second best time is today. So it's today. So if you are listening to this and um, anything I said resonates, take my advice. Don't wait too long. Take immediate decisive action. And tomorrow, do one thing to start building your personal brand. Post one piece of content that puts you out there. So now you're not thinking about it. You've done it. And now it's just a question of how well you're doing it. And now things change. Have you made any mistakes? Tons. Just in your, your quick time? Tons. Publishing content? Tons. What's the biggest one? Um, What's the cringe, most cringeworthy mistake? <laughs> Ooh, cringeworthy mistake? Has your wife or your daughter said, Dad, what are you doing? Oh, for sure. Or, I've yeah, embarrassed my daughter beyond belief. Um, <laughs> dad on TikTok? Oh, no, my God. <laughs> Can you stay off ta- Snapchat, Dad, please? <laughs> Luckily, I mean, fortunately, I'm not on, uh, not on everything yet, but um, yes, I have a 17-year-old daughter, and so sometimes... What's her preferred platform? Snapchat. It is? Okay. Snapchat and TikTok. Snapchat and TikTok, okay. Yeah. You know, I've, I saw, I heard I have, a, I have a five-year-old and three-year-old, so YouTube kids and I, yep. dad's not on there. There's no, there's no, I am. I did do a YouTube kids video with you my did. daughter. You want to hear something funny? Four years ago or three years ago, I did one with my daughter. What did you do? Some game she wanted to play and we created a little YouTube channel. She, my youngest, she's 11, so she must've been eight. And it was like playing with her toys or something fun. It was just me and her. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it has more views than half of my YouTube content right now. It's not, none of this is surprising to me. And. I laugh because I'm like, I could just play with my daughter and get more views. <laughs> <laughs> We've made thousands of pieces of content, tens of thousands of pieces of content. The piece of content that I have the most views on YouTube is my wife's, my, our, our gender reveal video. <laughs> Literally both gender reveal for but, my son and for my daughter. But I think that tells, that tells us something important. And that's kind of what I'm trying to learn right now. And what that tells me is what matters to us professionally doesn't matter to the masses. Correct. What The reason why that is the best is because that... It, that pulls an emotional string yep. with everybody. Yep. Every parent out there has been in that moment, that gender reveal. Yep. That's it. That just fills us all up as a parent. That We love that. That's a feel-good moment. You created an emotion where when I'm talking about entrepreneurship, I'm not necessarily creating an emotion for the masses. Correct. I am for a niche. Correct. And so what I did is I used to, the first month we were posting content, I was like always looking at the view count. Like, are we doing a good job? <laughs> And that was like when I first started my restaurant for the first time and I was looking at Yelp reviews. <laughs> mistakes. Yeah. Not Ke- you know what keeps you mistakes. up at night is Yelp reviews. Yes. Um, but now I change from that. Now it's if I can impact, you know, if I can impact one human a day in a positive way, that's all I care about. So if I get one view and that view is the right view, it's good. I'm not doing it for, I'm, I, yes, millions of views are great. Please come view everything I do. Yeah. Uh, but 
that's not how I'm judging success. I've changed my definition of success to be something that is actually successful. And that is impacting one person a day because it'll yeah. compound. Yeah, I think that's, it's interesting having this conversation because I remember when I first met David Meltzer, he had nowhere the personal brand that he does now. And the video that resonated with me at that time was a video about his son leaving the Super Bowl so that he could go watch the Super Bowl with his son. And I remember I'm like, well, I need to reach out to him because that video meant something to me. It had nothing to do with it, how many views the video had. Mm -hmm. It helped me understand who he was as a dad. And when I think about the content that I post, I think about business content and I think about personal content, but I know that it's all just content. It's just Sean. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to get barbecue content. You're going to get media content. You're going to get me being a dad. You're going to get me being a husband. You're going to get me in Bulgaria in the village because that's part of my life story. Um, for you as somebody that is personal, that is now going into the personal branding side, it is difficult once you start talking about family content. Where are you going to draw the line when it comes to being a husband and being a dad? Oh, you mean from content? From content. Um, I'm still drawing a pretty hard line on that. Good. Um, I'm maybe it, it keeps me from getting some sort of results that I would get if I if I would blur that line a little bit more. But um, I'm not gonna. There's nothing more important than family to me. So family my wife, my, my kids, you know, that that's priority one. So if I'm not going to post things that they don't want to be, you know, anything about the family that yep. doesn't pass their muster. And I have two daughters and a wife, so I'm in a house full of women. And I can tell you <laughs> no picture I take will ever pass all three of theirs uh, <laughs> sign off. So family stuff is harder to post um, just because one of them doesn't like the picture. But I think it's important to talk about because you're leaning so far into a personal brand, yet you are still distinctively drawing a line. And you can do that and still develop relationships, make that impact of one viewer, mm -hmm. one listener that goes, I like what Jeff's saying. You can still talk about being a husband. You can still talk about uh, being a dad, but you don't have to put your family out there if you choose not to. Correct. Yeah, it's correct. And I'm fighting for, my mission is to fight for the aspiring entrepreneur or business owner who is struggling. Yes. Because... There is so many people who fail because they quit, but failure and quitting are two different things. You only fail when you quit. Failure in business as you're learning, if you turn those losses into learnings and you develop past it, um, you can have immense success. And I believe wholeheartedly that everybody should be wealthy and both financially and with personal health and with relationships. And that's the definition of wealth is all of those things. And if we can help more people get, achieve that, then the world's going to be better and I'm going to have a better life because so many more cool things are going to come to the world, both in products and services and experiences and opportunities, because you need to make a lot of money. So I was interviewing actually on my show, an incredible man um, who dealt with one of the worst hardships a parent could ever imagine. I'll do a shout out, Mason Sawyer, uh, go check him out in his story. The 1090 podcast is his podcast. And I still, I, I can't get him out of my mind just because of what he had to overcome. Um, he lost his family in a horrific car accident, minus his youngest son. And during that process, seeing how he has dealt with that and what he's dealing with, and then thinking about the problems that we deal with and keep us down, yeah. and the fact that he's alive today and not where some of us would be in that situation and thriving in the best way possible um, and overcoming it how he can, it just puts it in perspective. And so I've been fortunate that I've been around incredible people who have given me an elevator to success that a lot of other people just don't have access to. Um, I was friends with the right people. You know, I grew up with David Meltzer. Uh, you know, he was my first mentor and uh, he's like my brother. Our moms were best friends. And when he was in high school, I used to watch him play football and he used to come watch me play little league. Um, I interned at all of his companies in high school and college. And so getting access to a thought leader, a disruptor like that, who has, who has walked the walk before there was Google and before anyone could find it and seeing behind the scenes of both his good times and his bad, yeah. his failures and his successes, his bankruptcies and his, his bullshit and his positivity, um, and getting to leverage his relationships and use that as a, as a springboard for my own success. I'm blessed in that. I mean, that's just fortuitous. That's just luck. If my mom wasn't teaching at the same school as his mom, I don't know him and I don't have that opportunity. Maybe I would have had a different one. Who knows? But I did. Um, and what I learned from watching him, as well as all of my other mentors and advisors that I've had along my, my career and my life, paying it forward is so important. 
um, you get to a point, you know, and it, I didn't understand this until I got to that point where when you don't no longer only worrying about your financial gains because you made enough money to take care of your financial needs and you're in a position of financial stability, wealth, or whatever you call it, what fills you up outside yes. of your family and outside of your own companies? I can tell you is when I get these messages on social media about a piece of content I put out that said, dude, thank you. I needed this today or this was inspiring or, hey, man, I'm loving this. This is really helping me. I saw your course on LinkedIn or, hey, Jeff, I heard you speak on this stage and it was actionable and I loved it. I get those and I genuinely am happy the rest of the day. Yes. It fills my cup more than you writing me a check for $5,000. Absolutely. Now, I understand if I'm not in a financial position and the $5,000 means more. I get it. I was there. I was broke, right? I was living paycheck to paycheck. I lived in my mom's house for a while with my, my wife and or fiance and my daughter, you know, all those things. So I understand that. But once you're past that, I now understand why the David Meltzer's of the world give so much back, why I'm trying to do the same thing. And that's part of the personal branding side as well, which is it's selfish. It makes me feel good. I'm not yes. going to lie to you. Yes, I want to help you Correct. because it makes me feel good too. Yep. If it didn't make me feel good, I wouldn't do it. I wish I could tell you I'm completely selfless. I'm not. But it also helps me grow my companies. It helps me bring exposure to things that I want to bring exposure to. It helps me create a message that I think is important for the world. And as a result, we're going full steam ahead, and we're going to see how it goes. It's a, it's a fun journey, too. It's exciting. It's incredible. I mean, to be here where we are, to see what you've built, and knowing that every single week on this show, I'm talking to the greatest restaurant leaders, the greatest hospitality leaders, telling them why it's so important in 2023 to believe in the internet mm -hmm. and to believe that your voice matters, your story matters. Do you believe in the internet? <laughs> yes, I do. Absolutely. I mean, I, I believe success is formulaic. So as you were talking to these people, I would, I would say if I could add to what you're telling them is you are successful because you figured out a formula. You owe it to your fellow man and woman Yes. and friends and, and people out there to share that. You have the secret to good health in business or in life or whatever it is. A strong marriage, a strong relationship, there's a formula that keeps that relationship strong. You know, 55% of all marriages end in divorce or some crazy number. It's not a good number. It's not a good number. It's more than, more people end up in divorce than don't. Yes. What's the formula for good marriages? Let's make sure that every, every couple learns that from day one because happy homes mean happy, happy homes. People yep. are happier. They're going to happy perform children. better. Happy children. Money is one of the root reasons why everyone divorces happen, uh, trouble, anger, issue, suicide, and all these things. So let's help more people make more money. Because as people make more money, they spend more money. If they spend more money, more people make more money. Yep. And we grow the economy. And there's a whole lot of things. You can't give to charity what you don't have. So, you know, I was talking with Mason, going back to the interview, just because I want to talk about what we this concept. You know, and he asked me a question on my show and he said, you know, with speaking, they, they asked me how much do I charge and I don't care about the money. Yeah. And I had to tell him, I'm like, dude, you have to charge. Yes. Because if you don't make money, you can't keep going on stages to spread your message and everyone needs this message. So well, if you don't want to buy a yacht, donate it to a charity, but make sure you have the resources so you can get on as many stages as you can. And you always hear like, and you know, most people want to give. And the reason you know that is, is because if you ask in a friend group, if you win the lottery today of a hundred million dollars, what are you going to do? Everybody says, well, not every, most people say, I'm going to get by my mom or dad yeah. this. I'm going to donate to this. I'm going to give all my friends this. Well, you just named all this giving you're going to do. You didn't say I'm going to buy the biggest yacht in the world for $98 million and then put $2 million in the bank and sit there and watch TV. You talked about all this giving you're going to do. Correct. So how do we help people give? Let's give them more resources to give. You got to first take care of yourself before you can take care of others. And that's true on an airplane. We all know the adage. If the things pop down, put your mask on before you put your mask on someone else. Because if you pass out, you can't help them. It's true in business. It's true in life. So um, for me, it's understanding that and being selfish to be selfless. And that's, that's part of the personal branding side now, which is like I have to build my personal brand so I can impact and help more. I can grow everything I'm trying to grow. And I can be the disruptive thought leader, business leader I want to be in the world tomorrow which is the world of the internet. And so I got to take charge now. So one of the most important lessons that my grandfather taught me was to stay curious, to get involved and to ask for help. Curiosity brings someone to a podcast. Curiosity brings someone to a book. Curiosity puts you in the room. 
but curiosity will only get you so far. You've actually got to do the work. If you decide that this is the episode that pushes you over the, over the front to go, okay, now personal brand matters, your voice matters, I'm going to start publishing on the internet, my thoughts, my ideas, my hopes, my failures, the things that I do well, but then finally asking for help. And I think for me, myself, it was something my grandfather taught me at an early age, but really, you know, truly working with David Meltzer and him honing in on that message of asking for help. As a man in hospitality, starting a restaurant in 2008 on Troy Street, I literally felt like I had to do it all by myself. And I very rarely asked for help until now where I am sitting here, where I realize a lot more of this relationship capital is I have to be humble and enough to go, I need to ask for help. How did you learn how to ask for help? Similar. Um, and it's hard, you know. It's not ingrained in the masculine culture in America to yes. be humble and vulnerable and ask for help. It's macho to know how to do everything and take it on yourself. I mean, it was programmed, you know, as kids of the 80s and 90s, that's what was taught to us. Yep. It's obviously a little different today, and so I think it's changing. Um, but we are a product of the era with which we grew up in. And through those mentorships, you know, understanding that I don't want to burn my hand on the stove if I can be told that it's hot. You know, I can not have to pay the dummy tax and I can learn from other people's experience. And we live in such a wonderful time to do anything because you have access to information in your pocket yes. that was just not available when I started my career as an entrepreneur in 2006. Yes. In 2007. It was smartphones were just kind of coming into June, June 29th, 2007, first iPhone. There you go. Yeah. P well, I actually interned at, and this is for you, Dave. You still owe me this. <laughs> um, I interned at PCE phone, which was the first smartphone. And yes. David Meltzer was the, was the CEO. And I did an internship for free for him. And the deal was he was going to give me a PCE phone. Never got it. I still oh, give really? shit all the time about it. Okay. Um, but he owes me a PCE phone. I don't even know if they'll if work. If they still exist. Yeah. Um, but regardless, you know, the whole idea of having information in your pocket was unheard of. Like when I was a kid, when you were a kid, yes. the entire access to information was the following. Mom and dad, a teacher, Encyclopedia Britannica or whatever version of those books you happen to have sitting yep. on your shelf, and that's it. If my dad and mom told me Australia was connected to Canada as a joke, and I didn't open the Encyclopedia Britannica, I had no way to verify if the information they were telling me was accurate. That was true. The world was enormous, and the information I had was what it was ever currently relevant and yeah. available to me in my s small little circle. Today, I can Google how to make a smart bomb, and I'm sure I could figure it out. Yes, I could Google how to do biochemistry and figure something out. There's nothing that we can't learn. So as you think through this time, the ability to ask for help is just going to Google, right? We all ask for help every day. Every time you go to Google, you're asking for help. Yes. Now, take that same message, that same thing of asking Google for help, and start asking the people around you that have the answers, the information, and the roadmap. You know, when I was delivering pizzas in high school, we had the Thomas Guide. <laughs> Thomas Guide. You know, and you had to open this book and find C6 <laughs> and use a little, like, playing the battleship game to figure out where the house was to drop off a pizza. Yes. You know, we had to memorize phone numbers. I had like 40 phone numbers memorized in my head. Uh, right. And the craziest thing, and this blew my daughter's mind, is if I said I was going to meet you somewhere <laughs> and I showed up and you weren't there, I waited and had no idea when you were coming. Correct. And if you decided not to come, I would sit there for an hour. Correct. And just wonder, where just is wonder, he? are you going to come? Yeah. Are you, is he coming? I yeah. don't know. That's it. So today we no longer have all those things. We are overloaded with information. And so the idea that we're too afraid to ask for help is crazy because we all ask for help through Google. We now need to have the courage to also ask for help in the human side and human, go back to humanizing the relationship side because Google's amazing at information. It's bad at introductions. The introductions is going to elevate your life, right? Knowing the right person who can open that door and make that warm introduction. I mean, we all know it. If, if you call me tomorrow and say, there's somebody you need to meet, I'm going to meet them. Yes. If that same person just cold calls me, I'm probably not going to meet them. Yes. What's the difference? You, you're the gatekeeper of your network to all the people you know. I'm the gatekeeper of my net. We all are. And so the more people you have, the more gatekeepers you become friends with, you lead with value with. And that's what I teach in my book. If you decide to buy it um, or you want it, just send me a message. Same thing in my LinkedIn course. I give you tactical tips and tricks that I've used and deployed that work really well 
to open up that relationship capital, to build an army of people who support you, that are champions of what you stand for and are thinking about you every day in the world. And it's, you know, my friends joke and say it's called fenced your luck, but it's really just the byproduct of the fact that I'm constantly working on this. I make friends with as many people as I can, as often as I can, and I try to lead with value where I can. I say yes. Will I give time? If I can, of course. I mean, you can't, you, you, you can't say yes to everybody, but you can give value to everybody. If I can't, I can put them in the right direction. I'm going to leave you with a quote from one of my favorite philosophers, which is Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> and Winnie the Pooh says, we will be friends forever. Just you wait and see. What does friendship mean to you? Friendship is brotherhood, sisterhood. Um, friendship is family. You know, friendship is understanding that you have my back every day in the world. And as you travel the world, you're just thinking about what's best for me. And I'm thinking about what's best for you. We, we bring each other up. Sometimes we make jokes about each other. We make each other laugh. There's love. Um, there's a whole bunch in that, you know, in what the definition of friendship is to me. But at the end of the day, if you're my friend, it means I'll do anything I can to help you. And I want you to win. And, you know, I tell this to my daughter all the time. And so when you quantify friends, it really hits home. There's almost 8 billion people on the planet. We all maybe have somewhere between two and a hundred real friends out of eight billion people. There is never a bad time to have someone else who cares about you yes. when there's eight billion people on the planet. And the majority of them don't know you exist. It's a massive world. So build your tribe, build your community, and personal branding is going to hopefully help grow that for me. So uh, every single week on Wednesday and Friday on the social audio app Clubhouse, we do a call at 10 a.m. Pacific time, and it's digital hospitality leaders from all over the globe. So if you're in sales and marketing and hospitality, if you're a content creator, come share your story, raise your hand, come up on stage. Um, every week we do a social shout out, but this week I'm going to give a shout out to my team, Cali BBQ Media, Stover, TJ, Toby, um, what we've done with the show to be here at Unevolved Studios um, now in our second year of producing content for Entrepreneur, uh, the guests that we've had on, this is truly inspirational what you've built, Jeff. Uh, who do you want to give a shout out to? Well, and I, I know you have a huge team, so. I do, yeah. So I'll first, uh, foremost, you're sitting in Unevolved Studios, which, um, you know, I came to my CEO and good friend Eric Hansen, who works with me, and I said, hey, I want a studio here. And he created, you know, what I love about Eric is if I if I say to him, I want this, and it's, you can, if you can't see me, I'm showing a small thing. Um, <laughs> he delivers the world. So if I say, hey, I'd like to get from here to there, uh, uh, he'll build me a rocket ship. And yes. so he created this environment, this studio. So for that and the entire Everbull team, um, what we're doing at the Everbull side, the entire team allows me the freedom to now do this because we have incredible men and women that are killing it every single day to build these brands forward and provide enterprise value for both the customers and the shareholders. And it enables me to now have the opportunity to build my personal brand and focus on this arm of the business. So uh, my entire team. So where can people follow you? Give me all of the brands, all of the socials. We're going to put the links in the show notes, but uh, let people know where they can connect with so all the brands. So with me personally, jefffenster.com or on social media at Fenster Jeff on Instagram. Um, everbull.com. If you're interested in a franchise, everbull.com forward slash franchise. If you're interested in Unevolved Studios, Unevolved Studios. And if you're interested in We Build, We Build webuildstuff.net. It's incredible. Thank you guys for this incredible experience. Thank you for being a host of me, letting me take over your studio. I mean, the fact that we have restaurant influencers behind us, it's, um, this is absolutely incredible. So anybody that's in the media space, in the hospitality space, if you need a studio in San Diego, let Jeff know, come and figure it out. Um, this place is absolutely first class. Uh, this is, I mean, you've built a dream over here. This is uh, literally the, the deep thesis that we believe every, every business, not just restaurants, but every business needs to be doing, and uh, you're leading the way. Can't wait to see what you build. Well, thank you, and I want to also thank you because talking about asking for help, I reached out to you, I think, two weeks ago and asked for some help, and you said, I'm going to come to your studio. We're going to do some podcasts, and, and you're going to help. So <laughs> behind the scenes, you're helping me today, and I want to thank you very much for that. Um, you didn't have to, and the humility with which you offer that service without worrying about what's in it for you is one of the reasons that you stand above and beyond the rest and why um, I truly am honored to, to call you a friend and thank you for, for coming and letting me be on your show. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for listening. We're grateful. Please share this episode. Uh, please subscribe. And as always, you know how to get in touch with me. It's at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. Uh, we hope you guys have an awesome week and we'll catch you next week. 
And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. People like Sam, the cooking guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using Toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. I will get you the link to the right Toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show, that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about Toast, you implemented Toast, you did a Toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your Toast story with us. DM me today to learn more. Be sure to check out Toast.